Patty Jenkins. What the hell happened? Wonder Woman 84 is directed by Patty Jenkins, like I just said. Same woman who did Wonder Woman 1. I was super forward to seeing this movie. Wonder Woman, the first one, was one of my favorite, if not my favorite, DCEU movie. I thought Patty Jenkins did an amazing job filming that movie. Just, I don't know what happened with this movie, folks. So the plot in this movie, I think it stinks. Wonder Woman and Kristen Wiig, who ends up playing Cheetah, who we'll talk about a little bit later, working in a museum, and they come across an artifact that grants wishes. So, of course, if you remember Wonder Woman, she lost Steve Trevor. So what does Wonder Woman, one wish she wants? She wishes for Steve Trevor to come back. Wouldn't be too bad, except the way they did it was kind of rushed, didn't make any sense. And the way Steve Trevor comes back in this movie is, it's mind boggling. This movie has so many like plot holes that happen. First off, this thing that you can make wishes for, you have presidents in the movie that are wishing for nukes. I, the President of the United States says, I want more nukes than Russia so we could beat them. Well, first off, that's stupid. If you're worried about a war, why don't you just wish for world peace, you idiots? So, with the nukes, they can make nukes appear out of thin air, but with Steve Trevor coming back, for some reason, he can't get his body back. What do they do? They take literally some dude in the movie who's end credit titled as Handsome Guy. And it's literally just some guy that is usually thrown in a Hallmark movie. Yeah, they used a Hallmark movie stooge. And Steve Trevor takes over his body, says a line from Wonder Woman 1. Diana recognizes that quote and now she can see, see Steve's face, played by Chris Pine, in this random door. Makes absolutely no sense. This movie, oh, uh, shit. Just so many things in this movie that kind of make me upset. With the plot, also the pacing in this movie. The pacing in this movie is horrible. First scene in the movie is pretty cool. It's back in the mascara. Diana's in a like kind of like an Olympic competition for where she lives. So that's pretty cool. It's a pretty long scene actually. That was very cool. And then it turns into going back into 1984. And there's a mall scene where Wonder Woman comes in and stops some guys robbing a jewelry store who have like a black market going on in the back. That scene was pretty cool. It was very upbeat and kind of campy feeling. It kind of brought like Spider-Man 2 vibes how it felt. And afterwards, the movie just went completely downhill. We almost go, I think, a full hour without seeing Wonder Woman again. It's her and Chris Pine kind of go on their own little like detective story trying to uncover things. And it's just pacing. I started to fall asleep during this movie. As I said earlier, Kristen Wiig, she plays, uh, I can't think of the her character name, but she plays Cheetah. And Cheetah in this movie is, if you remember The Amazing Spider-Man 2, and I think it was Paul Giamatti as Rhino. That's how useless she is in this movie. For whatever reason, Kristen Wiig did a good job acting, like she always does, but the script for her was just terrible. She kind of plays like a shy, kept to herself girl who's a nobody. Nobody notices her, and she wishes for herself to be like Diana, and little does she know she gets Wonder Woman's powers and all this. Later on in the movie, she doesn't want to be like Diana. She wants to be her own independent, strong woman. She eventually turns into Cheetah. By the way, this, they did the lazy trick with the CGI. They know the CGI was terrible. What do they do? They put the fights in between Cheetah and Wonder Woman during night and her CGI looks terrible. It looks like she came off the set of Cats and is in the wrong movie. Pedro Pascal, he plays one of the main villains in this movie. So with the Wishing Stone, he's been studying about it for years and his wish basically he wants to become the stone so he gets unlimited power. But it, with this stone, every time you make a wish, it takes something away. So his health starts to deteriorate and it's just unlimited wishes. It's just, again, it goes back to the plot being lazy. I love Pedro Pascal. If you watch The Mandalorian, you know how good of an actor he is. He's like the opposite character in this movie with Mandalorian he's all about saving the child Grogu and all that in this movie he's kind of like a jerk of a father to his son so he plays the opposite role he's very good only problem with me is I think he's just a little over the top with it it kind of made sense for the way the movie was at the beginning of the tone of the movie but like I said when the pace started to drag down it just it didn't fit with me I like Pedro Pascal but just it wasn't the best another thing this is the biggest con I have with this movie the effects in this movie are very weird it's not like the first Wonder Woman where Wonder Woman is just completely completely BA. In Wonder Woman, the effects are terrible. They, I don't know what it is. In Wonder Woman 84, the effects are terrible in this movie. When Wonder Woman was trying to run fast, it's just, I don't know what it is. Her feet are moving faster than her upper body. It just looks so weird. And I noticed it too at the beginning of the movie in the mall, when she's like using her lasso of truth and swinging around and just like gliding, it just, it looks so fast. Fake. Like, I don't know how to explain. I think the effects are terrible in this movie. Another con in this movie, it's honestly, I think it's too long of a movie. I think it's like two hours and 38 minutes. I, 
they I think they could have trimmed some stuff down like some of the detective work with Diana and Steve Trevor cut some of that back bring some more scenes where Wonder Woman is actually doing something and I think it could have been a little bit better off another huge con I have with this movie is just like I said Steve Trevor um, when Wonder Woman has to return like relinquish her her wish, Steve Trevor has to go away, so you know he leaves. And what ends up happening is Wonder Woman finally learns how to fly. We've had what three or four movies, and she can't fly. Well, now she can magically. She got the gift to fly finally. And then while she learns how to fly, for some reason, when she's going for the final battle with Cheetah and uh, Pedro Pascal's character, she starts using her lasso of truth to ride the lightning, pretty much. I don't know why she needed to do that if she just learned how to fly. Maybe she's just showing everybody that she loves Metallica. Don't know. Didn't make sense to me. A lot of these scenes didn't make any sense to me. So basically this review for this, I gotta say, this Wonder Woman movie is Wonder Woman 84. Yeah, go ahead, slap it in there. This movie's a giant turd. Massive disappointment. Thought Patty Jenkins had a great hold of what Wonder Woman was supposed to be with the first movie. I feel like massive disappointment with this movie. I'm hoping we kind of turn it around maybe with the next movie, whatever she's going to do. Still looking forward to her directing Rogue Squadron. Hopefully that's going to be a great movie, but yeah. Good luck with this one. You might as well take advantage of being able to see on HBO for f max while you can for free. Other than that, it's got a higher score on Rotten Tomatoes than what I thought, but not a same turd. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Coders Cove, everybody. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe. Thank you.